Hello and welcome to my channel, you guys. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about shamanism. So shamanism is a very wide-reaching term. Um, it's very often um, not used correctly because there are so many um, shamanistic uh, cultures out there and shamanism has existed for so many years. And so I kind of want to break it down and talk about core shamanism specifically, which is the study of all shamans over the course of time and what, what at the core is the similar qualities of all of these practices. So this originally was kind of put together by this man called Michael Harner. He's way more knowledgeable about this than me. He basically put all of his findings into a book and that book is all about, okay, what did all these cultures over all these thousands and thousands of years define as shamanism? And you know, I mean, this goes way, way back. And you know, a shaman at their core is basically somebody who meditates or somebody who connects with the spirit world or another world and sort of brings information back. And so a lot of a lot of cultures over time have had that. And so he wanted to figure out what is that core similarity that all of these cultures have had. All of these cultures who had never had contact with each other, but all of them had shamans. And so again, he created this book. He also created this foundation called the Foundation for Shamanic Studies. And by the way, this is where you can go and find shamans close to your area um, because it's a very in-person sort of thing. Core shamanism is basically you go into an altered state of consciousness, usually using some drum beats, um, and you go to non-ordinary reality to retrieve information from spirit helpers and bring it back into this world to heal. And that can be healing mentally, physically, emotionally, all of that. So it sounds very similar to meditation, but it's a little different, and I'll talk about that. So what, let's go into non-ordinary reality. They describe non-ordinary reality as anything except for this. This is ordinary reality. And why they say ordinary is we don't really know if this is the main reality. So that's why they gave it that term is, okay, this is technically ordinary reality. We're gonna go into non-ordinary reality to retrieve information. In shamanism, there are three worlds that you can go to. And again, these are loose terms. These are not specific. I think where this gets mis misused incorrectly is when people take the terms and take them way too literally. You know, it's in our heads. You know, with if you've seen some of my psychic videos, it's about your mind eye, not literally there's three worlds that exist. Um, and so they describe the three worlds as the lower world, the middle world, and the upper world. And the lower world, I think our minds jump to heaven and hell um, first, but that's a very Christian ideal. So don't think about it in those terms. Um, let's start with the middle world. The middle world is sort of like an exact copy of this world. And um, it would be, you know, walking out around your house. You know, it would look very similar to um, the world that you live in now. The lower world I would describe as more grounding, more primal. Like whenever I go to the lower world, it tends to be very like... Um, earthy is how I like to describe it, foresty, earthy. Um, it can take on many different forms for different people. So again, don't take it literally, it's what it appears to you. And then the upper world, I tend to be in the clouds. A lot of people see it as just bright light. Um, it can be a lot of things again. Um, so don't, don't assign it a certain image because it could change for you. In these worlds, the whole point of this is you go and you meet your spirit helpers or your spirit animals, and they are there to give you messages to help you. Um, and again, this is your meditating. Think of like a drum circle. Um, it's done in a very chill, like meditative state. Again, different from meditation though, because you it's much more visual and you are letting your guides, your spirit helpers take the lead. So this whole journey or this ritual, well, I just said it, is called a shamanic journey. Um, and so how you start it is you set the intention ahead of time. And again, you let your guides take the lead. So say I want to go into a journey and ask about um, 
what do I need to know in the upcoming week? I sort of set that intention as the drumming starts and then I let it go. And then I have the intention of maybe going straight to the lower world, straight to the upper world. You know, sometimes I let my guides just pop in and take me wherever they want. But I think when you're starting out, it's great to have even like a home base, like somewhere that feels comfortable. I think like I have a bathhouse that I go to and it's usually I start at this little bathhouse in my mind and then my guides grab me and take me wherever they want to take me. And again, this, I think meditation is about clearing your thoughts of all, or clearing your mind of all thoughts, but I feel like journeying is almost the opposite. It's about, it's about letting your guides come in and put a bunch of thoughts in your head. And again, there's a point where it clicks, where you're, you're stop, you don't force it, and your guides are like, this next, this next, this next, and it's very visual. At least for me, I should say that's because I'm very clairvoyant. Um, some people journey and they just hear things or they feel things. Some of some people have a hard time visualizing. And I think that if you're not very clairvoyant, if that's not one of your strongest clairs, maybe this isn't for you. Um, but if you're clairvoyant, you're going to love this. So if you want to learn all about journeying, I would definitely pick up this book. It's called Shamanic Journeying by Sandra Ingerman. It's a beginner's guide. It comes with a CD in the back of drums so that you can, if you don't have drums, it's very hard to drum and do it at the same time. Um, so it's, it's really great if you can go to a circle. There's a lot of circle classes that you can attend or you can just listen to a meditation. Definitely go ahead and get this book if you're interested. It's very little. It goes through basically what I just talked about way, way more in detail. Um, and it basically gets you so that you can do your own journey. So why I love shamanic journeying is because I feel like I'm much closer to my guides. I love the visual nature of it because I'm more clairvoyant and I like interacting with my guides in that way. And I feel like I end up spending much more time in this non-ordinary reality than if I were just doing a psychic reading for myself or somebody else. Because when I'm doing a psychic reading, I have to be present here. I have to have like one foot in one world, one foot in the other to be able to communicate back and forth. But when I'm doing a journey, I'm just laying in my bed, you know, listening to the drum track and I don't have to deal with what's going on in my ordinary reality until I'm done. Um, and so that's why I love shamanic journeying. And I do offer these as readings, but I tend to find that a lot of people are really confused about it. So that's why I made this video um, is because people are like, wait, you don't do it in person. You, you're you laying in your bed and then you call me. <laughs> and it's like, yep. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in this reading, I would recommend it because um, I don't know, I feel like I just get way more information and way clearer information and it's gotten to a point where I get so much information that I can't even type it up in an email. It takes me so long so I'm like, I'm just going to call you when I'm done and I'm going to read you all my notes and go into detail. So yeah, definitely a reading option with me if you want to learn how to do it yourself. Grab this book. Um, again, go to the, Shaman the Foundation for Shamanic Studies if you want to find someone who does this um, in your area um, or if you want to take classes too. There's a lot of cool drum circles that can happen in your area. So I'm curious what you guys think. I think a lot of people are kind of ugh, freaked out by the shamanic study stuff, but I really do consider it just another form of meditating. So I'm curious what you guys think. Um, thanks for watching you guys and remember to always trust your intuition. Bye!